Okay. You, you've been more watching the special tribunal of Lebanon for some time now. Yes. What's your assessment to that tribunal? How do you view it? Well, um, there's different levels of assessment. One uh, assessment, um, the, the, the major assessment in, in legal terms is that it's an imposition on Lebanon and it goes above Lebanon, Lebanese law. All right? Uh, Lebanese law is, it's a foreign tr court imposed on Lebanon and it's an incursion on Lebanese sovereignty because the murder of Mr. Hariri, which is obviously unacceptable as a crime, should be treated under Lebanese law and the argument that Lebanon cannot exercise its sovereignty is a form of imperial intervention. All right. What the Lebanese government at the time asked uh, in the, in the, in the uh, uh, Prime Minister and some others, they asked for such yes. juris foreign jurisdiction. Well, um, the, the right or wrong, mm. it's not in Lebanese hands, all right, which is um, a form of colonialism, even if the Lebanese government of that time agreed to it. Um, I wonder if... The parliament and the president did not endorse that. Exactly. And you have your different, your political system uh, uh, in Lebanon, of which I am not totally conversant. I have some simple knowledge of it, but not exhaustive knowledge. So it's in a delegation of sovereignty. The other issue, which is rather important, uh, no, I'll show you what's here. Here we are, for a question of the Great Lakes area in Africa. On April 6, 1994, two presidents in office were assassinated. Their plane was shot down, almost certainly by the Rwandan Patriotic Front, which was a pro-European, American, Canadian force. And no international court has investigated it, and the I International Criminal Tri for Tribunal for Rwanda, when the prosecutor's investigator in 1997 um, unearthed cogent evidence that the Rwandan Patriotic Front had uh, carried out the assassination, Louise Arbour, who was the prosecutor of this UN court, fired Michael Horrigan. So, and you have then this killing in Lebanon of a, not even a prime minister, Excellent. and they created a court for it. So it shows a double standard in international relations. You suspect ulterior motives here. Well, of course I suspect, <laughs> of course there are ulterior, ulterior motives. And if you look at, at that time, the the political context was um, to advance certain uh, Western interests, Zionist Western interests, which were in favor of this court. And then, uh, now it's uh, 10 years later, history has gone a bit farther and the war is rather intense, to say the least. And the uh, Special Tribunal for Lebanon has become rather somewhat irrelevant, although the editor of Al Akbar has been uh, charged for breaking secrecy agreements, and that's another question of, of free speech versus international court, and uh, the whole question of secrecy in international courts, of which I'm very conversant because I've worked in the International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda and in the ICC. The secrecy of international courts is the contrary of human, uh, of, of, of seeking justice because people are convict, convicted, charged and convicted by secret courts, all right, which are, uh, are afraid to say things publicly because someone who comes and denounces or makes testimony in secret um, is absolved of public scrutiny and history cannot go and study it. They cannot, newspapers cannot go and study, study it. Pu the public cannot uncover lies. Uh, in North America, in general, with some exceptions, courts are rather public, and that allows 
things to be brought up in the, uh, in the future if there's unfair convictions. And this is what international courts uh, tend not to want public scrutiny of their deliberations, which are of great importance. Thank you very much. Thanks.